We are live in Central Park. We are live in Central Park. We are live in Central Park, and we are live. I'm just making shit up. Ah. Uh. Hi guys, good morning on the YouTube. I thought I would try a morning walk live <clears throat> on the YouTube because YouTube really, when it comes to video quality, is king. Everyone's bitching and moaning that the video quality is not good on the Twitter or the Instagram. I think 5G, the 5G connection and the, you know, the virtues of the 5G connection are a myth because the quality sucks asshole. So much, so many times. Anyway, uh, Lenore is hunting squirrels. Look at her. Lenore, are you going to get it? Get it. Get it. Get it. Okay, here we go. Where's the squirrel? Oh, it's up there. I see it. There is a squirrel up climbing the tree. Oh, buddy, you missed it. Sorry. She's obsessed. I mean, she's a dog, so that tracks. Um. <clears throat> so I had, um, I got to post a photo. Um, I got together for a coffee with my friend, Paul Chamberlain. Paul Chamberlain is the creator and host of a podcast I was on last year called smart, funny, tortured. And Paul was in town <clears throat> and we became friends through the podcast. Uh, Jonathan Capehart introduced us, us, uh, Jonathan is our mutual friend and Paul, was in town. We had a little coffee, did some catching up on our respective lives. And, ooh, dead pigeon. Um, Lenore, get up. I don't want you rolling in the dead bird, honey. Thank you. Um, and uh, I was telling Paul about my TWA hotel experience uh, flying into New York on Monday. And so he sent me a video this morning. He went to the TWA hotel and had breakfast at... Uh, the Paris Cafe inside the hotel, which must have been delicious. We looked great. <laughs> Whatever he was having looked really good. Uh, let me clean my lens here. It looks a little dirty. Hang on. There, that's better. Cleanliness is godliness. Um, Lenore, get up. Thank you. All right, let's go down this way, please. Or should we go over this way? Let's go this way. Come on. Hey, I need you to stop doing so much cocaine. Or at least stop acting like it. You're doing a lot of cocaine. She's crazy. Uh, our primary election results are in. Charlie Crist is the Democratic nominee for the governor in Florida. He's got a lot of work to do to beat Ron DeSantis. But I think it's entirely possible. You know, and I heard from some people in Florida who don't like Chris. It's like, okay, that's great. Um, I understand that. But unless you want more of Ron DeSantis, buck the fuck up and vote for Charlie Crist. That's how that works. Okay, so quit your bitching and show up. Also, Republican registration, voter registration is um, above and beyond Democratic voter registration in Florida. We got to kids, we're going to fix this. Come on. All right, so that's Florida. Here in New York, I mean, it's too much to cover, but here in New York, Representative Jerry Nadler beat out his longtime colleague, Carolyn Maloney. They were colleagues in the um, uh, in Congress as representatives, but redistricting, redistricting uh, put them in opposition to one another. Uh, for the newly drawn District 12, which is where I am. I'm on the Upper West Side, but the district now includes the Upper East Side. Uh, so Jerry Nadler won. I'm not, you know, not a big surprise. I think, I guess some people were surprised that he won, like it was called so quickly. Um, you know, okay. Uh, and I guess that fight got a little ugly, which is unfortunate for two people who were used to working together. And these people are in line to what, there's Shakespeare in the Park tonight. Um, and people are in line to show up because Shakespeare in the Park is free. So you just kind of show up. It's literally you camp out. Uh, what else? Who we got here? Good morning. Good morning. Shave today? I might. Is it time to just let Florida go? 
uh, there are a lot of Floridians who would love to be their own their own country. I'm sure. Like part of me is like, let Florida and Texas go to see. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'd like New York and California to see. <laughs> we are kind of our own countries, actually. I mean, it is where a lot of the cool people wind up is Florida or California, and people bitch and moan. Well, that's not me. It's like, well, listen, uh, I got a word for you: popular. I'm stealing from the brilliant comedian Greg Proops. People complain about L.A. or New York. Well, it's too many people. It's so crowded. Yeah, fucking popular. Um, that's how that works. Just got a message from um, a subscriber, Susan. She said she's doing her part in Florida, which I appreciate. But I don't have to live there, so it's not up to me. I'm just saying it for the benefit of our friends in Florida. So, you know, Charlie Chris might not be your... Um, cup of tea, but listen, unless you want more Ron DeSantis, which I don't think any thinking person does because he's a dick, uh, you vote for Charlie Crist. And he's a handsome guy. He'd be a nice guy to look at for a few years. You know, he's, he's like a silver daddy, like good looking dude. He needs to get out of the sun, though. It's a little too tan. He needs some um, SPF. Charlie Crist. He's going to be visiting the dermatologist for some Mohs surgery. If he keeps getting tan like that, I say that for everyone's benefit. Um, what else? All right, so Jerry Nadler here in New York. Great. A fellow Upper West Sider, and I want him to get rid of the helicopter. So what I'm about to hear right now, that's a commuter. That's a rich person getting a ride to the Hamptons or an airport. It's just flying straight across. So that's a rich taxi. That's a wealthy person's taxi. Um, oh, what else happened? Val Demings, speaking of Florida, is going to be up against Marco Rubia. I'm sorry. Okay, so she's the Democratic nominee for the Senate uh, going against um, uh, Marco Rubio. I'm sorry, guys. There is no contest. Val Demings? Talk about someone with so much to offer. Versus Marco Rubio, who brings nothing to the party. Nothing. Holy shit. So, yes, Florida, you've got a delicious choice in front of you with Val Demings. I'm jealous, actually. She's so cool. I love Val Demings. She really, she really brings the heat. Uh, let's see. Russia might be willing to take them. <laughs> Uh, someone asks here, what is that one thing you do not like about NYC? Something I do not like about NYC. That's a really good question. Um, what do I not like about NYC? I guess there are a lot of things I don't like about NYC, but they don't really stand out to me because there's so much, as you all know, there's so much I do like. Um... What immediate? Oh, here's what I don't like about NYC. I don't like um, the way trash is managed. I don't like helicopters. We all know that. Um, the non-essential helicopter. Listen, if it's law enforcement or the FBI or something like that, and helicopters, traffic and stuff. Um, uh, yes, I'm all for those helicopters. It's the non-essential helicopter traffic that we all hate. I and any thinking resident of the area. Uh, but something else I don't like about New York is the trash management. It's really bad. Uh, New York City has not figured this out. And, uh, you know, it brings rats. Um, here in New York, once a week, at, in my neighborhood, it's Tuesday night. Uh, the trash is piled up outside on the curb. And it's fucking gross. And, um, you know, other cities have worked this out. New York, you know, it's not my job to figure it out. I'm not getting paid. If you want me to go onto some think tank, throw me a check and I'll get on the committee and I will, you know, help brainstorm, but I'm not going to, I ain't going to, daddy ain't going to do it for free. Um, but the trash management is pretty stupid. It's pretty stupid. There's something I don't like about New York. Yeah. Boston does it better. Cleveland does it better. Just that's just in my experience. I've never lived anywhere else. Um, yeah. 
so yeah, Val Demings. Let's see what else is new. Jerry Nadler, Charlie Crist. What else stood out to me? I don't know. We got 38 viewers here. Uh, may God bless you. May we all see you on Netflix one day with a series. Oh, that'd be nice. Um, I fear that people just don't know what to do. Like people in the business don't know what to do with me. You know, so I just have to figure this out myself. No one's helped, you know, uh, other people are more fortunate in that, you know, I guess they're more appealing than I am and, you know, have people who are eager or willing to help them and, you know, see the money in that. No one's ever seen that with me, really. So um, I'm kind of on my own. So I appreciate the sentiment. I really do. But I got, you know, I'm wide open for gainful employment or work. Um, but no one is interested. I'm, that's why I, one of the many reasons I love him, not giving it, but, you know, he's the only person who said, I basically said, you've got something to offer. I like what you've got to offer. I want to bring it on board on my team. I know what to do with it. And here's a check. The only person, no one else has done that. So I'm grateful for that. Other than that, I'm on my own. So again, that's just like a long-winded way of saying thank you for your sentiment that I should like a, have a Netflix show or something. Um, but I don't, there, there's never been any signs that any help is coming in that direction. So I'm not holding my breath. Um, until then, I'm doing my own thing, like right here. Beautiful day. It's going to get hot. It's going to be like 90 degrees. Um, and I have two dogs who just are on completely different pages, of course, as usual. Um, oh, also, oh, for those of you who don't know, oh, did I talk about this yesterday? Yeah, I did. I was at, uh, I was in Nantucket this past weekend. It's such a lovely weekend with lovely people. It's a great experience. I've already talked about that. Um, uh, I am coming, it seems I'm coming out of the other side of this sort of post COVID shit that I've had to deal with, um, with the, I had what I've had some symptoms post COVID and post, uh, yeah, that many people have experienced. I've learned, um, I had anxiety or panic issues cardiac issues, like heart issues, um, uh, like palpitations, um, panic attacks, uh, in the ER in Cleveland a few months ago, um, I would get exerted. I would like feel exhausted and exerted very easily. Um, not really shortness of breath. I was able to really inhale a full tank. Always have been. That hasn't been a thing. Um, Anyway, like these long COVID, like lingering issues uh, that started, like the first episode was back in November of 21 and then got worse, like really came to a head in like February of 22 and again a couple months later. So, you know, through therapy, breathing techniques, um, some medication, um, you know, and exercise, things have been better. So for anybody who's experienced like post COVID stuff, you know, I read, I read a lot that, um, you know, these symptoms wane for some people it's, you know, goes away in days, others, weeks, months, in my case, it was months on the outside, like a year. Um, oh, brain fog. That's another one. Like I find myself struggling to think of names or whatever that would otherwise more readily come to me. Um, uh, but I'm in the middle of like a real touristy area and it's proving a little annoying. All right. Hi puppies. I feel like I want to sit down and have a little chat with you. Um, so the news on that, I like to give periodic updates. Uh, for the benefit of anybody else who's experienced or is experiencing things like that. Um, I talked to my friend Lori the other day. She had also been to the emergency room a couple of times thinking she was having a heart attack. When in fact, it seems it's those symptoms and those episodes have gone away. So it's going to be a long time 
before we get like more information, I think, on what the effects that COVID is physically having on, you know, the mixed bag that we're getting from COVID physically. Um, but I also think that that bag, as I just said, is going to be very mixed and varied. You know, whether it's brain fog, loss of taste, my sense of taste is still not all there. It's I can smell things and taste things, but I would say my sense of smell and taste is at about oh, 60, maybe 75% on a good day. It's certainly not back all the way. Uh-uh. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Utsav got his booster in India. That's great news. Korea is night now. Oh, hello. Um, and what else can I tell you? And thank you, by the way, for hitting that little tip jar button on YouTube. Um, that helps the effort. Uh, enables me to keep going here. I noticed that I've done that with other people I follow on YouTube. And what a nice feature. For people who do work that I really support, I can like, ding, you know, tap that little tip jar thing and throw some money their way. Makes me feel good. So I thank you for doing that if you've done that with me. Um, and I encourage you to do it with others who create content that you like, you know, because it's keeps us afloat and able to do it. You know, this is sort of a new way that we get to watch and, you know, produce and enjoy content. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am in an area of Central Park right now called the Ramble. It's one of the most active bird watching areas in the country. And also, I don't know lately, because it's been a long time since I've been a total whore, but this is also a really active, once upon a time, gay cruising area, although not so much anymore. I mean, I walk the dogs through here all the time, and I'm not looking for the dick when I'm going through here. I'm talking to people on my phone or listening to podcasts as I walk the dog. So, no, I'm not really in that headspace about it. But um, uh, let's just say uh, I did some research on that some years ago. Uh, when it was a little truer than it seems now. But the Ramble, which is, again, what it's called, it used to be like a super flourishing gay cruising area. <laughs> like, you turn a corner and see two guys hooking up. Like, but, like, you don't see them anymore. Or, like, behind a bush. Or in the brush, in the thick of the, you know. Maybe it does at night. I don't know. Like, I can't imagine. There's not a whole lot of... <clears throat> There's not a whole lot of romance in that, I would imagine. <laughs> Yikes. Um, John, nice comment about the audio. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm experimenting with the morning walks. I didn't announce it on Instagram. Uh, with the morning walks on the YouTube. Because YouTube does video quality better. And Lenore, honey, really, please stop. Stop testing the limits of your leash. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. She is constantly testing the limits of her leash. Um, good boy. And it's a challenge because Smokey's getting older and we got to go slower because my boy is like, you know, I'm kind of catering to what Smokey wants. Like he's got seniority and he is the prince, the OG, and we get to do what Smokey wants. Uh, Lenore gets her her stuff too. Um, so what else is happening? Let me just give you a little panorama. What I'm looking at. It's nice here, you know. It's important that we guys and gals. It's important that we reconnect with nature and coming into Central Park enables us to do that, which is great. Hmm. <clears throat> It's also a great place for people to come and walk and wear really weird outfits and hats. <sighs> Man. <sighs> Thinking glamour needs to make a comeback. Am I crazy? Like, we need to start look dressing like we might want to, like, get a raise and get laid. Like, start dressing like you want to get a raise and get laid. <laughs> but also, do it for you. Because it's nice to look nice. Because, wow, it's just, I look around and people are on a real anti-glamour campaign. Boy. <sighs> How does anybody get laid? Um, 
Um, Smokey and Lenore are so cute. Oh, Jane. Yes, they are. They are. Um, how long have we been on? 20 minutes live. I should cut it short. I don't want to do these more than 30 minutes. It's like, really shouldn't do it more than 20. This is a little self-indulgent. Um, <laughs> but thank you guys for those of you who have contributed. Let's see. My sister's watching from Italy and I'm watching from New Jersey at the same time. How cool. See? The miracle of the internet. Uh, let's see. My other half and I were out shopping the other day. Could not find men's dress trousers, only sweats. Insane. I get it. Um, I totally get it. Um, the men's clothing landscape is depressing you know the attitude is like if it doesn't stretch then what's the point in wearing it it's all about stretch it's all about like workout pants or stretch pants and sweat pants and you know i hate sex pants um so i understand i i um i do a lot of shopping online i would rather not like because when you go to a store like you physically you're going there and you want to know that you're going to get something. I would like maybe a thing to do before you go to a men's clothing store is to look at what they offer online before you actually go in person. That way you'd have a better idea of what to expect. But there's like all the stretchy shit, like fucking J crew. Like you can't find, you cannot find cotton chinos at J crew that don't stretch. I want a hundred percent cotton chinos or khakis, whatever you call them. And like, they all have stretch in them stupid what is that stop it you know stretch means there's rubber in it you like we're all wearing rubber in our clothes and it's hotter and the rubber stops stretching and it blows out and it winds up in a landfill and it's toxic and i don't care if you call it elastane um whatever you call it anything that stretches has rubber in it and it stop it fucking stop it Ugh, yeah, I'm really mad at J. Crew right now. I'm mad at most brands. But J. Crew has dress pants, like they're suiting, like the Ludlow suit, and I forget what else they call it, but their suiting is nice. Hey, Lenore! And they, uh, J. Crew sells them uh, their suiting in separate, so you can get the suit, or you can get just the jacket, or just the pants. Um, so that's an option. Suit supply is another one. Those are my two, like, you know, because I've always been a guy on a budget. You know, if you've got more to spend, great. Go to Saks, Fifth Avenue. But, um, yeah. Okay, guys, let's sit for a second and talk to our friends here on the YouTube and on the Patreon. Um, I'm a teacher and back to school soon. Can't wait to buy new smart clothes and dress up. Oh, good for you. Yeah. It's nice to, I'm going to start doing it, I think, in September. Like, I need to get back into that gear because I like wearing, like, nice, I like wearing a nice collar dress shirt. I like wearing a tie, actually. I'm not going to do that at home. But when I go out, um, let's see, the men's clothing landscape now seems to consist of toddler, athlete, invalid, she, invalid chic. Um, that's true. Uh, let's see. What am I looking forward to in the fall culture calendar? Um, you know, movies. I'm looking forward to getting back into movie theater. I love going to the movies, like, and Broadway, of course. I don't know what. And I need to start making more trips to, like, the Met and MoMA, Museum of Modern Art. I would like to hook up with Jerry Saltz. I would like to go to a thing with him and do some video and make some content with the two of us. But I want to, like, let's, Jerry, talk me through an exhibit talk me through an exhibit, you know, and get his take on things. He's, you know, he, Jerry is the, uh, for those of you who don't know, Jerry Saltz is the senior art critic for New York Magazine. Really good at what he does, but also become quite a social media personality, and he and I have been connected for a while. Um, smart and, oh, there's the tourist helicopter. Ugh. Smart and uh, super funny. And um, I love what he has to say to artists about Stop being a baby and get to work. Yeah, because I need to be reminded myself. Stop being a baby and get to work. Uh, culturally, what am I looking forward to this fall? Um, uh, the Lincoln Center Film Festival. 
Um, uh, what was it? The um, that 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 movie theater subscription service is making a comeback. Not Stubbs. What was it? I forget what it was called, but that movie theater subscription service where you'd go and see an unlimited amount of movies for a monthly subscription. Um, uh, let's see. Khakis from L.L. Bean. Paul Donnelly. Good note. Thank you for that. L.L. Bean, khakis, chinos, whatever we call them. I think khaki is a color, chino is a pant. I have to keep remembering that because we all call them khakis, don't we? But we're really referring to the color khaki. Um, L.L. Bean, good source. Thank you for the reminder. There you go. But dress pants, like suit pants. Um, J. Crew does that. Just make sure you're getting the fabric that doesn't have stretch. You know, got to be real specific. Look at the uh, fabric content. No stretch, just 100% wool, 100% cotton. One, like you got to look real carefully or they will slide that stretch in under the radar and disappoint me. Also shortens the length of a garment. Garments with stretch don't last as long, by the way. They don't hold up. They just don't. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and we have to stop shopping with disposability in mind. We have to start shopping more consciously um, with durability in mind. You know, I don't shop a lot because I try to buy clothing that has that is durable. Like I'm not a big, people think I'm a big shopper. I'm so not. I like, I enjoy shopping occasionally, but I don't have the space in my closet. I've made good purchases. Um, like with dress shoes and stuff, like I'm all set. I don't need a pair. There is one pair I do want, but that's, it's not an urgent thing. Am I making sense? I think I am. Um, hmm. Watching from Scotland in Glasgow, eating your lunch. Oh, say bars, of course. Let's see. Donna says she's a big believer in a durable capsule wardrobe. Fast fashion is such a false economy. Um, yeah, and also fast fashion, it, it, it's deliberately designed to not last. Like your H&M things and your Zara things. And, you know, yeah, I know it's cheap and it solves a problem, but you know, people literally buy shit. Bill Maher talked about this actually in his new rule, in his final new rule this past Friday, rather eloquently. And I think actually that's something that Bill writes himself. I'm sure he's got help, but um, I really appreciated his observation and perspective on that. That was a really good point of view. If you didn't see it, you can go on, it's here on YouTube, uh, Bill's new rules about shopping and going out and shopping. Um, he had some interesting things to say. I appreciated it. Fast fashion is horrible for the environment. True story. Uh, thank you, Donnie, for your nice words about the haircut. Huge difference between need and want. Yeah, you know, buy good stuff. It's expensive. Like, uh, my favorite example, I talk about it all the time. People who have been watching me for a while are probably sick of hearing it, but like, my Alden shoes, my Alden dress shoes, my Cordovan. Cordovan is like leather that comes from the hind quarters of a horse. It's very durable. It's expensive because they source it when the horse is dying. Like it's the horse at the end of its life. We're not killing a calf or something. So anyway, I don't buy leather frivolously. So I bought the Cordovan Alden shoes. I have Chuck boots and I have Cordovan um uh, wingtips from Alden in, in black and in c color eight, which is basically burgundy. And they're like $800 a pair. That's a lot of fucking money for a pair of shoes. However, I'm all set. You know, I can wear those chuck boots or those wingtips with a suit, or I can wear them with jeans, you know, and I, they're versatile some people would disagree and think that wingtips are really for casual, but that's a strict rule. Anyway, my point being, they were very expensive. So between the four pairs of Aldens I have, that's $3,200 worth of shoes. That's a lot of fucking money. Uh, but they're gonna. Th I'm all set for life. Like, done. That investment's all set. Like, in my wingtip game, done. 
All set. Thank you very much. My Chuckaboot game, done. We're all set. We're good. Same with Crockett and Jones. So, I would be that way with a watch. I would be that way with uh, jeans. My jeans were expensive. Not my Levi's necessarily, but my Telesen jeans. I'm going to have those jeans for years and years and years. They're so well made and they're really good, well sourced denim. You know, I'm going to have those for years, not cheap throwaway stretch jeans. Susan's. Hi, Cuenca, Ecuador. Am I saying it right? A uh, huge difference between need and want quality. Yeah. Susan says, I'm coming to NYC next month. Which big gay? Oh, it's 30 minutes. I got to go, you guys. I'm talking too long. I'm coming to NYC next month. Which big gay ice cream do I go to? I want to go there. Um, I, I go to the only one I think exists, the Big Gay Ice Cream. It's on Columbus Avenue at West 85th Street. Columbus and 85th. All right, let's go, guys. Oh, you got to shake it. You're all dirty. Come here. Come here. Up she comes. Hello. Look at this. Mm. Um, yeah, Big Gay Ice Cream on 85th and Columbus. Thank you for that sweet baby kiss. I love the puppy kiss. I love the kisses. Oh, I live for those. Those are my favorite. Um, so that's it for the morning walk. I'm so glad that you guys were able to join here on the YouTube experiment. I'll keep doing this and I'll, I'll like maybe, you know, try to do it at the same time every day. Um, I like the idea of going back to YouTube for the video stuff especially live because, um, you know, that YouTube does this better. It's just YouTube does this better. What I call getting dirty, the dogs call getting dressed. I know. Uh, so there were helicopters. There just aren't as many today. Yeah. I think the tourist helicopter thing, school year is starting. So maybe the tourists aren't out yet or aren't out. So school year is beginning and the helicopter traffic goes down generally during the school year because tourist season is wrapping up or the summer tourist season, I should say, is wrapping up. Holiday season is magical. Like um, holidays in New York is magical. I kind of love that. The tourist season goes up again. Uh, so helicopters, not as many because I think the kids are back in school. Also, it's expensive. I don't know. Last time I looked, it was a triple digit number. For a helicopter tour, helicopter ride over the city. So it's a little fancy. All right. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in uh, and joining me for the um, the uh, YouTube morning walk experiment. Look at that sunlight. Oh, my gosh. Summer, summer. All right, kids. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. And thank you.